So congratulations on green to gold. Uh, Thank you. And it's uh, well, it's been a while, obviously, because <laughs> you've had you've gone through some stuff to get through to get this album out. Um, mm -hmm. And so you must be pretty happy that uh, with the reaction it's been getting, you've been getting some amazing reviews, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's been it's been a really positive response. It's really it's really nice to see after so much time away. Right, right. Yeah. And so uh, when did you decide to make this record and that you were going to kind of be able to 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 make music again? Um, it was <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> it was sometime in uh, uh, would have been like late 2017, I think um, I had just stopped. Um, I just finished touring on my solo album. Right. And um, and I actually, like I was having vocal cord problems. Right. So I didn't really know when I would be able to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the coughing is unrelated to the vocal cord. <laughs> <coughs> but as soon as anybody coughs these days, you know, you're like, oh no, they've got, <laughs> Some kind of no, I'm good. I'm 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 half vaccinated. I should be all right. Um, I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was like end of 2017, and I I knew I was going to have to take a break from singing to sort out my my vocal cord issues. Right. Um, but I think that was kind of where like the spark of an idea came from. Of you know, I I was uh, staying at at our drummer Michael's uh, apartment. And, right. Um. It was just one of those moments. It was really nice to see him, and I was, and I had been touring by myself for a while, and I just thought to myself, like, I don't want to do this by myself anymore. Like, I, I, I miss playing music with this guy, and yep. um, I don't, I, I didn't know that it would be. I, I think I maybe assumed it would be a long road before we had an actual album finished and released and all that, but um, I kind of just started with that intention of wanting to, wanting to work with him again. Right. So I know there are other people on the record doing bits and pieces, but it's mostly a collaboration mm -hmm. between you and Michael. So, and he's mm -hmm. mostly a, the drummer. How did the two of you work? How do you talk about what you're going to do and when you're in the studio together? Um, I mean, I think, I think that's always the trick is finding a good workflow um, for starting ideas. And then it becomes about, okay, once you, once you have the beginnings of an idea, whether it comes from kind of a jam or just, um, just a sketch like how do you move that into the next phase into it becoming a song and taking shape um and so the way that we started was by just him uh playing drums basically just him playing in the studio that i had that i had been uh, setting up in uh, in my garage upstate right and uh it was you know enough space for uh, for him to be playing drums and for me to be playing along with him. And um, I didn't really have any song ideas yet, but I just wanted to like mic up his drums and, and have him just kind of play with whatever ideas that he had. And, and we would just record them. We, you know, recorded, I think about 20 of those. And, and then I just kind of had this library of beats from right. him. And I said, okay, I'm going to spend a little time with these um, cause he was just up to visit for like a few days at the time. And, uh, you know, I just, I said, I'll take a, a, a little bit of time with these. I'll see which ones kind of spark ideas and we'll go from there. And so I did that. And I, I kind of would go, I would basically show up at my studio every morning and, uh, kind of cycle through these different beats and say like, oh, let me try just kind of playing playing along to one of these and seeing if anything clicks and you know with a handful of them it did and so that became like the beginning of the songs I didn't I try not to overthink it I just sort of said okay this this feels like something let's see where it goes right well it's interesting because most these days uh, especially in pop music when you think about um, music that began with beats it's all very electronic and very doosh, doosh, doosh kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you've got is exactly the opposite of that. And I, I think you've kind of described it as Sunday morning music for want of a better mm. dis description. Uh, so was that in your mind to make that kind of music from the beginning or did it kind of evolve naturally like that? 
Um, I think it evolved by uh, by me recognizing what time of day I was most creative and productive. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, th I think around that time, I was very into the idea of kind of harnessing whatever, uh, whatever energy kind of seemed best suited to the time of day, uh -huh. which sounds a little woo woo, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty down to earth, actually. It's kind of just this idea of, of kind of uh, scheduling my day in a way where I know that in the morning, I seem to uh, be more, mornings seem to be more conducive to me coming up with musical ideas. Right. You know, the afternoons might be more, you know, about kind of playing catch up with kind of administration in my life and emails and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think because of that, I just developed this habit of uh, working on, working on music and songs in the morning. And I was always happiest doing it when it was like a sunny day. Right. There you go. And so the, the music kind of followed suit. It just ended up sounding like the time, time of day that it was made. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I guess, quite different probably than people may have been expecting from an Antlers record who were listening seven, eight years ago. Were you concerned about that? Um, I don't think I was too worried about it because I, I think that um, early on, you know, after hospice, I recognized that every single record we made was going to be a bit out of line with what expectations were because right. immediately there was the expectation that we would make another album like that one. And we never did again. And so um, I think it was around then that I let go of, of worrying too much about expectations. I think as well, like I think people who, who have, who know me in my life and, and have, been with me all these years like I think this is probably the kind of album they expected me to make just knowing right. where my life had gone and how my life had changed and how my disposition had changed over the years so to me it felt like a natural progression and that was the kind of album that I wanted to make and I, I felt like um, it would be kind of bringing the audience up to speed with where I'm at now even if it wasn't what they were expecting. Very cool. And, uh, and I know you, you, you touched on the fact that you had some throat problems. You're kind of working with a rehabilitated voice, I think I, I read. Mm -hmm. And before that, you had problems with your hearing. So those kind of medical issues, how does that affect you musically when you're, when you're making a record at this point, both kind of mentally and physically? Um, at its best, it gives me parameters. You know, I think that um, when I'm willing to kind of embrace those limitations, and use them as sort of uh, creative boundaries. Yep. They help me, they help steer me towards what kind of music I want to make and what kind of music I'm capable of making right now, um, which happens to be in line with, with the kind of music that I enjoy listening to, which is tends to be on the mellower side. Uh -huh. um, but it, it definitely, you know, it, it definitely can breed doubt if I'm not careful, because uh, if I start thinking too much about how to perform this music, like in a live setting, um, or if I, you know, if I, if I worry about, uh, well, I guess that would be the primary one. If I get too caught up in trying to imagine how this will translate to a live setting, it can lead me to uh, second guess the creative choices I'm making. Gotcha. Um, and so I try to just keep that out of it and just say, okay, like right now I need to kind of go easy on my voice. Um, yeah. and not, not, um, not be unwise in the way that I write parts for it. And right. everything else is just going to have to follow that. Um, I, I'm, I feel grateful to have like an open-minded audience that has <laughs> followed us through a lot of changes. It makes me feel like we can continue to change. And, and as long as that voice at the center of it is, uh, is kind of doing its due diligence, then, yeah. um, then it can, you know, the, the music can continue. Right. Have you had a chance to perform any of these songs in front of an audience uh, with COVID and all that stuff happening? Or no, no. no. Um, we, we recorded, we filmed a few of them, like we filmed performances of a few of them uh, in this past fall, but that was really just for 
um, essentially a, f- a small film crew from one, right. one camera person. Um, but we haven't, no, we haven't done a performance since uh, 2019 when we did a, a hospice reunion tour. So right. uh, um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a minute. All right. Now, speaking of films, there is a full length kind of film of the album that was made as well with a couple of dancers, Bobby Jean Smith and Or Schreiber, I believe is mm-hmm. So was that, mm-hmm. how much involvement in that did you have? Um, I mostly worked with the director, um, but you know, it was really his, his and his co-director's uh, uh, vision. And essentially he and I talked early on, basically after I'd finished the album, right after I'd finished it, um, I got in touch with him because we had worked together before. Right. And uh, I asked him if he would be interested in making a, some sort of music video for one of these songs. And his response is that he wanted to make a film for the whole album. Um, <laughs> so what do you think of that? I thought, I mean, I thought that was great. I, I didn't want to like uh, impose, you know, mm-hmm. but I, I was flattered by it. And then he and I went back and forth talking about the album he kind of gave me his impressions of what he what he gleaned from the story right um what he believed the story to be and i kind of i um i responded to it and i you know as he was kind of putting together like a parallel story to the one on the album i gave a little bit of feedback as far as one you know uh, how to keep it kind of in line with the intent of the album without trying to make it the same story yeah yeah um but then, yeah, it was it was him and his co-director Emily who were working with the dancers, and they they kind of crafted this this whole story with movement and light and and scene and um, and you know he showed me rough cuts of things along the way, but I never had any changes. I never like I <laughs> I it was pretty much just just in my eyes it was it was perfect out the gate. So right, right. And do you think people think differently about the music when they see the film with it? I have no idea. <laughs> I honestly, it's <laughs> it's so enough. hard for me. It's so hard for me to uh, to put myself in that perspective because right. I know this. I know this album so well, and uh, I knew the I knew the album before I knew the film. Whereas I think for a handful of people, they saw the film with the album first before they yep. heard the album by itself and yep. so um i don't know if 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 it lined up with their impression of the album or if when they listen to the album on their on its own now if they see the images from the film or if they've managed to kind of uh create their own film yeah. inside their head that gotcha. moves along with that i don't really know yeah, yeah. now you, uh, so the, the film aside Lyrically, how much of the, the, the album is autobiographical? Is there a story in, in, internally that you're trying to tell? That... Uh, yeah, I mean, it is autobiographical, um, even if every song isn't about me. You know, it's, right. about, it's about my, my you know, various friendships and, re- and relationships with, with people in my life. Um, yep. So in some cases, it's their story, but from my perspective, right? Um, but oh. you know, all all based pretty much in reality. And I, I think with like with anything I write, there are you know liberties taken with reality and the kind of laws of physics and things like that, right? Um, but yeah, I think it's a more uh, plain spoken record than I've done before. So for instance, the and, song like Su- uh, "Stubborn Man" is that <laughs> <laughs> that's. It. You're being pretty hard on yourself, it seems like. You know, it's funny, I kind of wrote that song initially in the second person i wrote it as kind of like like your like the lyrics were all in the you tense and um and it felt really uh really judgmental and really harsh and i was i was kind of talking to a couple like uh, various friends of mine where i was picking up on these tendencies of theirs that were driving me crazy (laughs) and um yeah and i was writing this song that uh was 
pretty harshly critical of yeah. them. And I, I had a moment of, of a kind of let he who is without sin cast the first stone and recognizing that I also possess a lot of these <laughs> qualities and tendencies. Right. And I, I also like, I, I will do this in songs. Sometimes I will just, uh, in the process of writing them, I will, I will either, uh, like in this case, I s switch out uh, what perspective it's told from, you know, switch it from you to, to me yeah. or, or she or he or whatever, or I'll change it from past tense to present tense, things like that. Um, and so I did that with this one where I said, let me, let me try switching it all to like me saying this about myself. And I kind of liked it more. I thought it was actually kind of funny. Um, like, I, cause it's sort of like, uh, like the whole song is kind of self-effacing um, and, and honest, you know, both in, in the qualities I was picking up in other people and also just kind of admissions of my, my own behavior. Um, but yeah, it's like, I, in some ways I sort of think of it as like a funny song, um, <laughs> <All right. laughs> like something kind of humorous about it. <laughs> the other one I was hoping to touch on was it is what it is. Cause you've got a, uh, a horn player, Kelly Pratt, who's playing a, a mm -hmm. myriad of instruments on that one. Barrier yeah. sax and flute and French horn and all sorts of stuff. So how did that come to be? Um, well, we've, we've known Kelly for a long time. He, uh, he toured with us on Familiars for, for a long time. Right. Um, he is an incredible instrumentalist who's, who's played with all sorts of people over the years, Arcade Fire, Beirut, um, uh, most recently Father John Misty, um, uh, just a, just a brilliant musician. And, right. but I, uh, he, he performed, uh, yeah, he provided, uh, some, horns and woodwinds on one of the songs on my solo album, uh, New York. Um, but yeah, hadn't been on an Antlers album before. And I, uh, yeah, I sent him the track when it was mostly done. And I, I said, there's this, there's this passage here, um, you know, after the first chorus, go do whatever you want to it. And he came back with a sax solo, which, uh, which was just delightful and just made me right. so happy to hear. Um, and as well as all this other instrumentation around it. And right. um, yeah, I just thought it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And what can you tell me about the song itself? Well, since we're on it, on the subject. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basically a song about like reluctant acceptance of something heartbreaking. Right. You know, and that can be, you know, essentially it's about losing somebody uh, whether through uh, through circumstances of, of friendships, uh, divorce, death, you know, there there are a lot of ways to lose people, and it's this sort of resigned sentiment, this sort of saying of like, I, I, I wish there was some way we could have prevented this from happening, but hmm. uh, but here we are. This is what happened, and it seems like we have to just accept it. Right. Right. So the album was released on the 26th of March. Um, mm -hmm. What was what was releasing it like for you? Uh, was it a big day? Was it was it kind of underwhelming <laughs> or overwhelming? Um, kind of all of that in a way. Like I've never, <laughs> right. I don't, I've I've never released an album without going on tour shortly afterwards. Sure. Um, and so. I was sort of expecting it to feel a little bit weird. And, you know, I've talked to friends who put out albums during the pandemic who had a, you know, had their own version of that experience. Right. Uh, just saying like the album's out. Okay. Now what? Yeah, yeah, um, I've, I've had that conversation with people. <laughs> it's yeah. Very, they seem really but it, it was, it, but it was still really nice. You know, I got a lot of really sweet messages from, from friends and uh, people I've known for a long time and a lot of, you know, uh, just support from, from the audience and right. um, and fans just responding to the album, and it also just you know it felt it felt good to 
let go of this thing that I've been holding yeah. on to for a long time. You know, we finished the album about a year ago. Right. And that's often the case that you're holding on, you, you finish it and then you live with it for a long time before it actually gets released. And uh, so it was nice to, for everybody else to hear it and for me to let go of it and kind yeah. of let it have its own life now. Right. So are you thinking about what you're going to do next? Yeah, I've been working on new music. Um, there was a lot. There was a lot of music left over from this album. Uh -huh. um, we recorded a, a ton of a ton of kind of pieces of songs and things like that, and and a lot of them got got jettisoned. But there are some things that were kind of salvaging and turning into new songs, and then just a lot of brand new ideas that we're workshopping right now. Um, it's it's nice to have some time after yeah. having finished this album, uh, some time to work on some new stuff because we're not going to head out on tour for yeah. I'm, for I'm wondering, while. just thinking off the top of my head, if musicians are maybe rethinking how they work now that they the live thing is kind of been forced to be taken out of the equation for a while, then maybe, maybe you won't always tour after an album and maybe you need to give yourself some time. You know, I think there's definitely something to be said for letting an album sink in yeah. and letting people get to know it before you perform it. Because yeah. there's this there's this kind of uh, phenomenon that happens when you're touring a new album where you're sort of force feeding it to the audience <laughs> in between the songs that they actually know and would probably rather hear. Right. So I think uh, I'm kind of into this idea of we've released this album and then you know, several months from now or a year from now or whatever, we're going to tour it. And by then, like, it will kind of feel like it's part of the back catalog. It'll feel older and, and more right. familiar. Right, right. Of course, you could do the Neil Young version, which is uh, the Russ Never Sleeps. He performed the whole album live before releasing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a bold move. We only we did that once and it was kind of a kind of a disaster um, just because it's it takes practice, you know, it takes, it really does take playing a song or an album many, many times before you get comfortable with it. Right. Um, so I really respect the people who can like debut an album live and make it sound great. I've, I've never succeeded in doing that. <laughs> very good. All righty. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure, Marty. Thank you for Things doing Things are this. happening in upstate New York still. Uh, it's getting to be springtime or summertime there, opposite here. So. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're getting into springtime and it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I'd say things are happening. It's just in kind of a more low-key way than than maybe some more bustling parts of the country in the world. But yep. Well, it fits in yeah. with what's on the music and the, and the album. Yeah, so I think so. I think so. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. You as well. Take care. Bye. -bye.